Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all the goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servants can look to the hands of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of content, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander in his army was Sisera, who lived in Harashah Hagoim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and it oppressed the Israelites cruelly twenty years. At the time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lipidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah, Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon, with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his, his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord, heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, and receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, 
are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a, a thief. For you all are children of light and children of the day who are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore encourage one another, and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You are God. You are God, God we, we praise, praise you. you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, you all angels, all, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing an endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious, glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble army of the prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did, did not, not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's property. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things, enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things, enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping what you did not sow and gathering what you did not scatter. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap what I do not sow and gather what I do not scatter? And you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, 
Throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Currency. What an odd word with which to start a sermon. Currency. What is it? Currency is simply a medium of exchange that operates between two people. In the financial world, and apparently, if we hear the gospel rightly today, in the spiritual world as well, medium of exchange that is used is money. In fact, Jesus talked a lot about money in Scripture. 16 out of 38 of his parables dealt with the issue of money. An amazing one out of 10 verses, 288 verses in all in the New Testament deal with money. Overall, a whopping 500 verses in Scripture relate to money. And the amounts referred to usually in Scripture are absolutely huge. Talents, you see, were a way of grouping together money in the old world. In the ancient world, one talent was worth about 20 years wages. So in the gospel to the first slave, in today's gospel to the first slave, the man gives control of what amounts to about 100 years of wages. The second slave, 40 years of wages. And the third slave, he's not doing too badly, one year of wages. With money, of course, comes responsibility. With vast amounts of money comes vast responsibility and vast authority. Apparently, the slaves are supposed to do something with this money. In fact, it sounds like they are supposed to do with the man's property whatever he would have done with it himself had he not decided to go it away. Peter Martin, a preacher, has a fun way of illustrating this. He says to the 100-talent guy goes the wealth to develop cool new technology, which enables people to carry around little computerized phone cameras in their pockets. And pretty soon everybody in the world has to have one of these phones, and so they buy them, and in time he doubles his money, and he's happy with himself, and his master is happy with him, and people all over the world are using these phones to snap shots to each other and to have political arguments about important topics. To the second man, the 40-talent man, given 40 years of wages, he decides to open a series of high-end coffee shops in which you can go and buy state-of-the-art coffee for between eight and ten dollars per cup. He too is successful. He too doubles his money. He is happy with himself. His master is happy with him. But the third guy, the one talent guy, guess what he does? He freaks out. He freaks over this whole responsibility thing. He says to himself, it's dangerous, I think, to risk playing loose with another person's money, especially when that other person, the significant other, happens to be my boss. So he does the safe thing. He gets his money, he puts it in a shoebox, he puts the shoebox under his bed, and he leaves it there. Currency is the medium of exchange, and currency works best, money works best, with finance as it is most attuned to the needs of the financial world. But when money applies not to the financial world, but overall to the social world, what medium of exchange do we use? Social currency is about using words. We don't use money, we use words to interact and exchange. There in the social world, words become the medium of exchange between people. Not dollars, not cents, not talents, not denarii. And this is not a new concept at all. Social currency simply applies to the value of information when it is shared between two people. When it is shared between two individuals and people want to continue to share it, we say it has good social currency. A good concept of social currency is, well, let's 
face it. Gossip. Gossip works well. Gossip obviously has value. People want to continue sharing it, and it spreads like wildfire. Why? Well, ultimately people share when it benefits them, and when they get in return some personal value out of sharing, like with gossip being in the know. The single most important component of social currency, therefore, is personal value. Well, to do any of this, we need a currency of exchange. Money works, but not as well as words in the social setting. Today's gospel, and frankly much of the Bible, as I said, a whopping 500 verses, in fact, intermingles the two currencies. We use words, we talk, we talk about money, we want to know who's got it and who doesn't, who's got power and who's lost it. The Bible talks about money because talent, a financial term, has a broader value. It can be taken out of the financial world and placed in a much broader social perspective. More broadly interpreted and biblically speaking now, talents refer to all the various gifts that God has given us for our use. This definition embraces all the gifts, natural, spiritual, and material. It includes all of our natural abilities and resources. It includes our health and our well-being and our education and all of our possessions, including our money, and also all opportunities that we have. Each one of these blessings is like a seed to be invested, to be planted in the good earth of our faith and grown there and shared on behalf of the kingdom. Now, according to rabbinic law, back now to the gospel, and investor number three of this play, burying a talent was regarded as the best security against theft. If a person entrusted with money buried it as soon as he had it in his possession, he would be freed of all liability if anything should happen to it. I guess the one talent man was quite surprised because the gospel, as it turns out, turns the law on its head. The master considered burying the talent and thus breaking even to be a loss because he thought that God's gifts, which are extravagant to be sure, serve in two basic ways. They are there to be used. If you love it, use it. They are there to be used. Affiliation, they add a quality of belonging to the community of faith when we use words and good old basic conversation works this way. Through conversation, we find our community. We find our common unity with other people and that feeling of belonging in the heart comes with it and we come together. And what's happening the whole time is this. You see, the root of the word conversation is simply to convert. But it isn't a forced and hurtful kind, like a hostile takeover. I can buy you out. See it my way or you're wrong. Off to hell with you. But it is reflective of a far more gentler quality, like give and take, and exploring together, and praying together and beginning to discern God's will, which is simply what I most want to do because I believe it is also what God most wants me to do and offer all to God from whom all blessings flow. Think of what we talk about most, the words we use most at St. Martin of Tours. Are they like jargon? words of a privileged few who understand the inner language of a particularly complex subject? Is it the fine art of bantering back and forth? Is it language on the run, usually too diffuse to be of any real use, sort of strung along like fragmented sentences? 
as we pass going this way and that way about our business? Is it mostly negative? Don't do that. Put that back. Mind your manners. And this is an odd but perceptive one. Do we use words as a way to engage without really connecting or strengthening the relationship with another person? Is it cocktail talk endlessly? Of the many words, each one a seed, each one a sign of God's investment in the kingdom, which is my life also as a baptized Christian, I mean. The one word we all at St. Martin's most share, at least in this setting, is the incarnate one word, Jesus. Some way, for all of us, being here, the very essence of this place and its existence and its continuing to exist has to do with one word, Jesus, God's incarnate word. When it does, all words begin to heal, not divide, but to integrate, to build and to build back and to build together. And we come into the spirit of the 100 talent slave. So that as we begin investing more of our life, more of our self for God, the more God is able to do the same for us, investing more of God's self, the Holy Spirit for us. Until we become more and more in this world, well, as they say, we grow in Christ. We become more Christ-like. As the old adage goes, we walk our talk. As St. Francis said, it is no use walking anywhere to preach unless our walking is our preaching. The Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, but be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love upon the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor and glory of your name. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we, that we all, all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your, your name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that, that they, they may be faithful, faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that, that there, there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that, that our, our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be delivered, delivered from, from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual shine, shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, may we, we also come, come to share, share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name is Chris Gooden. I've been a member with my family at St. Martin for about six years, and I was so excited to have an opportunity to talk uh, with regards to our, our stewardship plan. And the main topic of Hope Grows Here is so relevant to everything that's going on right now. We look out in our community, in our world, there's a lot of folks that are going through tough times. We've seen it, you've seen it, and it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. So when I started thinking about this topic and praying about it and trying to figure out how I wanted to communicate this phrase and this thought, a short story kept coming to my mind. And it's very short, and I'll give you kind of a synopsis of it right now. A boy and his dad were talking, and they were underneath a big tree, a big oak tree. And the son was asking the dad about planting seeds and when and how long this tree took to grow. And finally, the dad turned to the son and said, you know, the best time to plant a seed, do you know when that is? And the son said, no. The best time to plant a seed is 20 or 30 years ago. Because this is what happens. The tree is huge. We get to play underneath it. But do you know when the next best time to plant a seed is? The son said no. And the dad looked at him and said, right now. And that thought kept coming back to my mind. The best time to plant a seed is 20 or 30 years ago. But the next best time is right now. And we have opportunities everywhere in our life and in our community plant seeds. So when we think about hope grows here and that phrase and how it links all of us together in our common efforts, let's think about where we can plant seeds in our community, in our parish, and with each other so that 20 or 30 years from now, we have huge, massive oak trees everywhere. And our kids and their kids get to play and relax underneath them. Thank you.